Over the last couple of videos, we looked at various Ayurvedic concepts, the seven chakras, the science of Tantra and so on. If you look closer, you will see that there is a common word that sprouts across all these topics, Prana. A very closely related word is Pranava. Also known as Omkaraha and Ekaksharam, Pranava is the source and controller of life as we know it and therefore is also known as the sound of the divine or the divinity itself. In this video, we are going to take a deeper look at the origin, significance, symbolism and the right pronunciation of Pranava. The Sanskrit channel is an effort to explore a vast variety of topics from original Sanskrit literature. If you wish to support this effort, consider becoming a sponsor on Patreon or make a one-time contribution through these options. Your support will help us improve the quality, length and number of topics covered in our videos. Do check out all the links in the description below. Let me ask you something. What is your definition of God? Different people have different beliefs as to the shape, form and name of God. But all of them have a single founding principle. What is generally referred to as God is that which is the source of creation. Now, where is the source of creation? If you look closely at a plant sprout or a person grow, while the raw material for it is being gathered from outside, the process of creation itself seems to be happening from within. So there is something which is created and the creator is within the created. This is the beauty of all of it. All of creation, animate or inanimate, is in some stage of creation, maintenance or destruction, all happening from within. Now this means the source of creation is within every single thing that is created. Among all of creation, it is the human creature which is endowed with the capability of being conscious of this tremendous phenomenon. It is of course a different matter that most of us live and die either ignoring or denying this possibility. While all of this may seem very puzzling at first, there is a tremendous possibility here. The possibility of accessing the source of creation within, accessing divinity within, becoming divine. This is all every god, guide or guru has been trying to help us with, empowering our own capabilities to access the source of creation that is within our own selves. This is all every scripture on spirituality is trying to help us with. To give us a process of turning inward because that is where divinity lies. We know that the most obvious signal of life within the body is the breath. The Sanskrit name for this is Pranavayu. Prana can be roughly translated as life. The source of life Prana is Pranava. This life force manifests itself as the aspects of creation, maintenance and destruction within the human body. The sounds attached with these aspects are A, U and M. These sounds are manifest inside the human body, just below the navel, at the chest and above the throat. One need not go so far as to have an experiential realization of these sounds inside the body. Just uttering these sounds loud enough will create a reverberation at these very specific body parts. Even phonetically, the sounds are in the order of fully open mouth partially closed mouth and a completely closed mouth. So, the sound of pranava is a combination of A, U and M. Mm. There are whole systems of yoga that make use of these three sounds in varying proportions to activate those particular locations and the corresponding chakras inside the human body. These three sounds when uttered together form the sound Om. This process is called as Gunasandhi in Sanskrit grammar. The sounds A, and U when mixed together form the sound O. It is not because there is a grammar rule that you need to pronounce it this way. It is natural for the mouth to produce the sound O when mixing A and U together. It is because the mouth is physiologically arranged that way these grammar rules came about. When the sound A mixes with the sound E, it becomes A. When it mixes with U, it becomes O. You can try these out for yourself as a fun exercise. So yes, it is pronounced Om when you are using Pranava as a word, a word to address the divine. This is why you see that almost all mantras in Sanskrit start with Om. 
and of course yes it is a combination of the sounds a u and m you chant them one after the other if your intentions are to work on each particular chakra associated with these sounds the duration of the chant of each syllable is based on what chakra you want to activate more some processes make use of just a while some make use of only m the best way to chant for general well being is to utter all three in equal measure if you are still not convinced about this there is one final undoubtable proof just look at the symbol for om it is a perfect combination of a u and m in devanagari script some say these are the sounds of brahma vishnu and maheshwara some say the symbol is representative of the face of ganapati some say it represents the body of the divine mother shakti all of these arguments are true because this is the sound of the divine that reverberates within the human body and in the same way across all creation the significance of pranava has been mentioned in so many scriptures from patanjali yoga sutras to bhagavad gita and upanishads lord krishna says this repeatedly in bhagavad gita in 7th chapter he says aham pranavah sarva vedeshu i am pranava among all knowledge in the 9th chapter he repeats aham vedyam pavitram omkarah i am the pure sound om that is to be realized in 10th chapter he says it again giramas mieka maksharam among sounds i am the single undestroyable sound which is omkara in his yoga sutras patanjali says tasya vachaka pranavah meaning the sound that denotes god or ishvara is pranava continuous meditation on the sound and meaning of om one of the ways of doing ishvara pranidhana is seen as an effective way of achieving the objective of yoga taittiriya upanishad says om iti brahma om iti idam sarvam om is the divine om is everything that exists mandukya upanishad says om iti etad aksharam idam sarvam om is the sound which is everything that is manifest this same knowledge is expressed in various ways in chandogya upanishad brihadaranyaka upanishad shvetashvatara upanishad and many many others in fact atharva shikha upanishad describes each individual sound inside om in so much detail that it needs to be covered in a video of its own many cultures have tried to express this in their own terminology they had their own ways laid down by masters who mastered this capability of accessing divinity within this same sound is what is being chanted as amen in islam and amen in christianity so if there are many versions of this sound what makes the sanskrit way of pronouncing it right it is because of the significance of what happened in the land protected between the himalayas and the indian ocean it is the number of masters this protected culture produced we had so many people who became fully capable of accessing the divinity within we created language arts dance music math and medicine all of it focused on one thing enhancing the human capability of turning inward and accessing divinity within we even called our land bharatam and ourselves bharatiya the land that revels in the light of existence and the people who are in tune with it that is exactly why sanskrit holds such a treasure of invaluable information i hope you enjoyed watching this video if you wish to support the production of more videos like these consider becoming a sponsor on patreon and access special patron benefits or make a one time contribution through these options your support will help us improve the quality length and number of topics covered in our videos consider subscribing to the sanskrit channel where we explore hidden gems in the vast world of diverse sanskrit literature see you in the next video namaskaram